Today, we'll create something you've probably never seen done in Canva before. We'll turn a standard image of Elon Musk into a party mask by covering some advanced Canva techniques using powerful tools that are often overlooked. Let's get straight into it. Open Canva and create a new design. I am using a YouTube thumbnail crop, but you can follow along in whatever dimensions suits your project. Let's first change the background color of the canvas to black to ensure good contrast between the subject and the background. Upload the image you intend to use for the mask. Then, with the image selected, open the Magic Studio section and select the Magic Grab tool. Select the brush tool, then carefully paint around the subject's jawline, making sure not to cover any of his clothing. Next, paint over the rest of the head and the background, then click on Grab. Now delete the remaining bottom part of the image, and with the head selected, click on the background remover tool, like so. As you can see, by leaving the background in the frame earlier, it allows us to easily cut around the subject's hair by using this tool. Open the Magic Eraser tool and remove any unwanted pixels from the edges of the subject. Create a duplicate of the subject and reposition it directly over the original like so. With the top layer selected, open the Magic Eraser tool, set the brush size to the absolute minimum, then start from the outer edge of the face and paint into the left eye like so. Now carefully erase the eye by slowly painting over the eyeball, making sure to avoid cutting into the eyelids. When you are happy, click Erase. It looks rough, but I'll show you how to clean it up later in the tutorial. Repeat the same process for the other eye. Open the Positions tab, and in the Layers panel, make a duplicate of the bottom subject layer by pressing Ctrl D. Reposition it so it sits over the bottom layer perfectly. Crop the top layer from right to left until it meets the outer corner of the eye. Do the same with the bottom layer in the opposite direction. Select all of the layers, enlarge them to the full height of the canvas, and export the image as a PNG file with a transparent background. Re-import the image and place it on a new page, making sure to enlarge it to the full size of the canvas. Go back to the original page and copy one of the bottom layers, then paste it onto the new page and move it behind the subject, like so. Find any rough areas of the eye and cover it with the bottom layer, then open the Tools section and select the Draw tool. Select the marker, then open the Color Swatch panel and sample a color from the area we have just covered. Set the weight to 1, then draw over the area that requires attention. Resample any colors if needed and fill in other areas. Crop out the bottom layer and fill any gaps that were missed. When you're happy, open the Layers panel, select all of the pen layers, and group them together. Then move them behind the subject layer like so. It's still not perfect, but it should be enough to make the rough areas unnoticeable. Export the latest version as a PNG file once again with a transparent background. Doing this allows us to edit the whole mask as one image instead of multiple layers. Upload the latest version to a new blank page, then open the Photos Library and search for Handholding Abstract Passport. Add this one to the canvas and select the Background Remover tool. With the image still selected, open the Magic Eraser tool 
and with the brush size set to the lowest, begin to draw a path around the index finger. Now increase the brush size and remove the remainder of the passport from the image. As you will see, there is a small hole left in the finger. Let's fix that. With the image selected, flip it horizontally if you intend to hold the mask to the right side of the face. Press R on your keyboard to create a rectangle shape, resize and rotate it so it covers the area that needs fixing. Move the shape behind the hand image like so. Open the color swatch panel and use the selector tool to sample a color of the hand to the nearest point of the rectangle. Again, it's not perfect, but it should go unnoticed when fully zoomed out. Group the two layers together and place the hand over the subject's chin to give the impression the face is being held. You may notice that the thumb is obviously over the chin. Let's fix that. With the hand image selected, Open the Magic Eraser tool, zoom in with the smallest brush size possible, and simply erase the thumb completely. Next, place the base subject on the canvas and place it behind the mask layer. I am using an image of myself, but feel free to use the most suitable image you can think of here. Resize the base subject so it is proportionally accurate to the size of the mask. At this point, it's a good idea to change the background color of the canvas to something bright as we will be working on shadowing. Select the hand and mask layers, then rotate them slightly and move away from the base subject layer. You may also slightly tilt this layer if it works for your image. Open the Edit section and select the Shadows effect. Give the mask a drop shadow and adjust the angle parameter so it angles towards the base subject. Change the other settings to your liking, making sure to keep it realistic looking. Bring the image back to its original size. Open the Elements tab and search for Black Gradient Shadow. Select this one and line it up with the side of the mask layer so it casts an extra layer of shadow. Make sure to decrease the transparency substantially. Select the mask layer and open the adjustment panel. Make subtle adjustments to the texture settings if it works for your image. Now select the hand image and do the same making sure to match the skin tone to the mask layer. Go to the Canva homepage and open the AI image generator called Dream Lab. Enter a basic prompt like wavy white string with a loop at the end, black background. Keep going until you find one you like, click on the copy icon and paste it onto the canvas. You've probably noticed I use a lot of generative AI in my design work, but have you ever stopped to wonder, how do these AI tools really work? Well, that's exactly what today's sponsor, Brilliant.org, can help you understand and so much more. Brilliant isn't just about AI though. They offer thousands of interactive lessons covering math, science, programming, data analysis, and yes, AI. What makes Brilliant truly unique is its focus on active learning. Instead of passively watching lectures, you dive into hands-on problem solving that lets you experiment with concepts directly, a method proven to be six times more effective. Brilliant's approach builds your understanding from the ground up, starting with first principles, and they keep you engaged with a mix of challenging problems, motivating features, and daily encouragement. Plus, the courses are created by an award-winning team of experts experts from top institutions like Stanford, MIT, Google, and Microsoft. Lately, I've been diving into their How AI Works course to get a better understanding of how the tools I use daily actually work. And Brilliant's focus on building problem-solving skills rather than just memorizing facts is exactly what I need to become a more effective designer. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash Lily's Tech Tips or scan the QR code
code on screen, or you can click on the link in the description. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Now, back to the tutorial. Select the background removal tool and crop the image if needs be. Looks like I will need to use the magic eraser tool for this one. Open the photos library and search for Gromit. Select this one and place it at the end of the string. Open the app section and search for the app called Skew Image. Select the Gromit image and skew it so it appears to be angled in the right direction for the string to pass through it. Do the same for the second string entry if you have one. Select the string and the grommet layers and group them together. Position them behind the shadow layer so the lighting is consistent. At this point, you can place a background that contrasts well with the main subject. Some of you may want to know how I animated this design for my community post. That was a stop motion animation, and you can find out how to do it in Canva by clicking here. Until next time.